Hello and a very warm welcome to today's session brought to you by Team Textbook Super Coaching. I hope all of you are doing really well. Jaldi se deri nahi karte hai, bada bada start karte hai. I hope aap logo ne achhi tarah se kal ki tayari kar li hogi. Tayari in the sense not just uh, academic tayari but also mentally you are completely prepared about it. Uh, good evening, good evening Sonali, Himanshi, Kasturi, uh, Zamar, Anjali, uh, Rishikesh, Sanchari. Uh, all right, uh, let's very very quickly get started. Let's very very quickly. get started uh, i think there were some issues altogether main zyada time nahi dungi abhi because i really want all of you to also uh, make sure that you're reaching your respective uh, you know exam centers on time please wake up early there's no need to actually be in a panic stricken mode altogether um sari ki sari jo cheeze hain ek bar achhi tarah se dekh lijiyega don't carry unnecessary things because wahan par bahut stress ho jata hai ki kisko deke jayenge it is better to pay attention rather than focusing ki bhai meri cheez kahan par hai main kahan par rakhungi usko so that just causes unnecessary last minute hassle theek okay? hai calmly paper ko dijiyega you all worked really hard uh, so there is no need for all of you to actually get worried also theek okay? hai uh, so let's very quickly get started let's very quickly get started kuch kuch cheeze thodi bahut hum log revise karenge uh, sabse pehli cheez jo aapne yaad rakhna hai ki whenever you are reading a particular question us time pe dhyan dijiyega ki kaise aap usko answer kar sakte hain uh, how are you able to understand the various nuances also so ye sari cheeze bhi ek bar I know Sonali, बहुत डर लग रहा है Everybody must be feeling very scared and very nervous at this particular juncture. Uh, which is be very confident, have faith in your abilities, and unfortunately or fortunately, we're the first people, so we don't even have a trend of paper one. Or when they say first paper नहीं होता, तो हम लोग बोल देते कि paper one में ये ये trend आ रहा है. But that's okay. You're gonna be the trend setters tomorrow. Uh, uh, मैंने आप लोगों को आई ऑल्सो शेयर लाइक यू नो एन एनालिसिस ग्रुप प्लीज फील फ्री टू ज्वाइन दैट वी आर गोन बी प्रॉब्लम इन वन ऑफ द सेंटर्स इन नोएडा तो अगर आप में से कोई भी नोएडा के सेंटर में है डू की पास पोस्टेड अबाउट दैट नो नीड टू बी अ फ्रे नो नीड टू बी एंड इट्स वेरी नेचुरल हैविंग बटरफ्लाइज ऑन योर स्टमक एट दिस पर्टिकुलर लास्ट जंक्चर इज एब्सोल्यूटली नॉर्मल तो आई वुड इन से दैट राधर इट्स हेल्थी अगर आप उल्टा नर्वस नहीं हो रहे होंगे तो दैट इज अ कॉज ऑफ कंसर्न ऑल टूगेदर राइट ओके चलिए देरी नहीं करते हुए लेट्स जस्ट वेरी क्विक रिव्यू अ फ्यू कॉन्सेप्ट थोड़े से कॉन्सेप्ट को देखते हैं थोड़ी से टर्मिनोलॉजीज को देखते हैं लेट्स जस्ट रिवाइज ऑल ऑफ दीज लेट्स जस्ट कवर ऑल ऑफ दीज ठीक है इसको थोड़ा सा अच्छे से एक बार देखते हैं गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग ठीक है इन सारी चीजों को अच्छे से देखते हैं तो हो मंग फॉलोइंग फर्स्ट यूज द आयाम्बिक पेंटामीटर आयाम्बिक पेंटामीटर यूज करने वाले पहले कौन थे हु वॉज द फर्स्ट पर्सन टू एक्चुअली यूज आयाम्बिक पेंटामीटर so when we are looking at iambic pentameter which is a, a one of the most commonly used meter who was actually one of the first people to actually be using iambic pentameter iambic pentameter kon use kar rahe the who was the one who was using iambic pentameter iambic pentameter kon use kar rahe the uh, iambic pentameter kon use kar rahe the okay uh, himanshi i will i will definitely check the check it on instagram thanks so much uh, iambic pentameter kon use kar rahe the so uh, all of sare absolutely right earl of sare was actually using it earl of sare was the one who was using iambic pentameter so iambic iambic trochi spondy unstressed stressed is your iambic pentameter five meter the metrical structure ya ki henry howard earl of sare was actually one of the pioneering uh, writers who was using the iambic pentameter uh, theek hai so please keep that in mind do remember that that how iambic pentameter is actually being used all together over here by earl of sare theek hai earl of sare use kar rahe hain uh which poem by ts eliot has the following line after such knowledge what forgiveness 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 ye kahan par use ho raha hai after such knowledge what forgiveness absolutely right pooja all of you will be rocking you don't really have to worry about it at all jitna zyada worried rahenge utna hi zyada you know the scores are actually going to be impacted uh, so don't at all be worried thode se questions aaj hum practice kar rahe hain hum zyada nahi karenge i really want all of you to sleep on time wake up on time be energized write your papers really well uh, what is the correct answer it is giran shreen right giran shreen is the one that you are able to see okay so please keep that in mind after after such knowledge what forgiveness what forgiveness are we talking about giran sheen that is what it's telling you about uh, in ui of modern existence religion sexuality in stuff ke upar bhi based hai okay uh, consider the following statements and indicate the correct combination the passionate pilgrim was published in 1599 the title page mentioned that it was by william shakespeare the title page mentioned that it was by william shakespeare the title page mentions that it was by william shakespeare what are, what is correct the passionate pilgrim ye kya hai it's a collection of 20 poems 
पोएम्स ठीक है ट्वेंटी पोएम्स जो विलियम जैगर्ड पब्लिश कर रहे थे विच इज कमिंग इन फिफ्टीन नाइनटी नाइन सो कलेक्शन ऑफ ट्वेंटी पोएम्स दैट यू वर एबल टू सी दैट वॉज कमिंग इन फिफ्टीन नाइनटी नाइन ओके हिमांशी डो वाली वन कट ऑफ एट द मोमेंट लेट्स जस्ट सी प्रोडिक्शन ही होगा अभी कैसा पेपर कैसे जाता है विल बी एबल टू फिगर दैट आउट राइट सो जस्ट गिव इट अ लिटल बिट ऑफ टाइम एंड देन वी कैन टेक इट फॉरवर्ड फ्रॉम दैट ओके What is the correct answer here? Good evening, Vishal. Good evening. Good evening. What is the correct answer over here? What becomes the right answer? Okay. So statement one is right. Statement one is absolutely right. Statement one is correct. Statement two, when you are looking at, okay, जब आप statement two को देख रहे हो, so one is correct. So you can actually eliminate this. This can be eliminated. When you are looking at two, the title page mentioned that it was by William Shakespeare. That is true. William Shakespeare actually में सिर्फ दो sonnets थे, you know, and three short extracts थे जो कि आए थे. But you were able to see कि William Shakespeare का नाम इसके अंदर आ गया था. So two is also there. So therefore this will be eliminated. Three क्या है? All one fifty four sonnets of Shakespeare appeared here. नहीं. Shakespeare के कितने works आ रहे थे? इसके अंदर सिर्फ Shakespeare के दो sonnets आ रहे थे. सिर्फ शेक्सपियर के दो सॉनेट्स आ रहे थे तो दिस इज नॉट करेक्ट दिस इज नॉट करेक्ट सो बाय डिफॉल्ट दिस बिकम्स रॉन्ग एंड ऑटोमेटिकली दिस इज द राइट आंसर दैट यू आर हैविंग द वॉल्यूम इज इज द वॉल्यूम आल्सो कंटेन पोएम्स बाय अदर ऑथर्स दैट्स ट्रू ठीक है सो प्लीज कीप दैट इन माइंड पैशनेट फिल्म जो है इट वॉज ऑफ कॉर्स टाइटल्ड एज बाय विलियम शेक्सपियर बट आप क्या देख पा रहे हो कि द कलेक्शन ऑफ ट्वेंटी पोएम्स इट वॉज फर्स्ट पब्लिश बाय द प्रिंटर विलियम जैगर्ड एंड विलियम जैगर्ड वॉज अ प्रिंटर 1599 में ये आ रहा है पोट्री कलेक्शन में एलिस्बिकन पोट्री में यू कैन एड इट टू योर नोट्स आल्सो ओवर हियर ओके सो प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट इन विच ईयर डिड जॉन कीट्स रोट द सिक्स ग्रेट ओड्स व्हिच इज आल्सो कॉल्ड द मोस्ट प्रोडक्टिव पीरियड ऑफ जॉन कीट्स राइट इसको क्या बोला जाता है इसको मोस्ट प्रोडक्टिव पीरियड ऑफ जॉन कीट्स भी बोला जाता है यू आर एबल टू सी इट्स इट्स लाइक अ वेरी प्रोडक्टिव पीरियड ऑफ जॉन कीट्स सो व्हाट इज द राइट आंसर इन विच ईयर डिड जॉन कीट्स एक्चुअली राइट मोस्ट ऑफ इट्स ओड्स वेरी नाइस वेरी नाइस Absolutely right. 1819 के अंदर आपकी जो maximum codes है वो आ रही हैं. 1819 के अंदर आप क्या देख पा रहे हो? 1819 में आपका the most productive period है. Annus Mirabilis Tennyson के लिए क्या consider किया जाता है? 1850. Why Annus Mirabilis? Why Annus Mirabilis? So the year of miracles uh, is is the term that is given for 1850 because a he became the poet laureate, b he get, got married also, and c we were able to see that his in memoriam was published. So it was professionally, personally, uh, you know, uh, as a public figure, a big key achievement that you were able to see. And John Keats' ka sabse productive period is 1819 period. Hai. That's the most productive period that you're able to see. Ode on Grinchin, uh, Ode on Indolence, right? Uh, your Melancholy, Nightingale, Psyche, ye sab, six Ode, Ode to Autumn, this sub is period. Mein aare hai. Okay, so please remember that. Okay, moving on to the next question that you are having. Moving on to the next question that you are having. Who is the speaker of the following lines? Ah, but a man should exceed his grasp on what's heaven for. Okay, uh, so when you are talking about these lines, ah, but a man should exceed his grasp for what is heaven for. ये कहाँ पर आ रही हैं? Where are you able to see these lines? Very important lines that you are able to see. कहाँ पर ये lines आ रही हैं? Where are you able to see these lines? Where are you able to identify these lines? These lines are you able to identify? Where is it that you are able to see that these lines are clearly categorically visible? Jadi se bataiye what becomes the right answer over here? Where are you essentially able to see? Aap kahan par dekh paate hain ki ye lines jo hain aapki aaring hain? Where are you able to see these lines altogether? Very good. Andrea del Sarto is the right answer. Andrea del Sarto is absolutely the correct answer, right? Andrea del Sarto, Robert Browning ki line hai, and uh, Andrea del Sarto is the speaker altogether. Blank verse mein likhi gayi hai. Uh, he's an old Florentine painter who uh, who's talking about disappointments in the life of an artist altogether. And uh, you know, uh, jo painter ke self-thoughted ambitions hai, that is also something which is being spoken about over here, right? So Andrea del Sarto. In which poem does Dryden compare Charles II with Emperor Augustus? Emperor Augustus को कहाँ पे वो compare कर रहे हैं Emperor Augustus को? Quickly tell us what is the correct answer? What is the correct answer? Emperor Augustus. Emperor Augustus. Where are you able to see that he is being compared to Emperor Augustus? So, uh, what is the correct answer over here? What is the correct answer over here?
what is the correct answer over here? What is the correct answer over here that you're able to see? Absolutely right. This is Astria Redux. Okay. What is this? This is Astria Redux or Star Reborn. Religio Lacy, religion of a layman, Annus Mirabilis. Annus Mirabilis is talking about the plague, the great fire that you were able to see, right? That was taking place. Uh, the Dutch defeat also, PFD, Istara Sevia, Piyadrak Sakte, Hind in the Panther, talking about religious debates that were going on at this particular juncture. So, Astria Redux, to hey, that is actually actually trying to talk about Charles II star reborn, right? Charles II star reborn, that is what you're able to see, okay? Uh, so please keep that in mind. All right, moving on to the next question, quickly tell us what is the correct answer over here. This is a very simple question that you are having. Which of the following is an example of emblem poetry? Emblem poetry ka konsa example hai? Emblem poetry ka konsa example hai? Emblem poetry ka konsa example hai? Which work are you able to see as an example of emblem poetry? Emblem poetry, emblem poetry, very simple, very good, very good. Herbert's Easter Wings is the right answer. Herbert's Easter Wings is absolutely the correct answer. This is an example of your emblem poetry. Okay, emblem poetry, which emblem, emblem ban rai, wings ke format mein, that you are able to see. Which poem begins with the following? In a summer season when the sun was mild, I, I clad myself in clothes as I become a sheep, as I become a sheep. What is the correct answer over here? What is the correct answer over here? What is the correct answer that you're able to see? It's a beautiful poem altogether that you're able to look at. What is the correct answer over here? This is, this is, this is a narrative poem, Middle English period, Langland is absolutely right. Langland ki, the vision of Pius the Plowman, the vision of Pius the Plowman, which is coming from the pen of Langland, divided into A, B, C, D, 10, A, B, C, text, A, A, text, B, text, and C, text. So, you have to keep that in mind altogether. Which of the following modernist poets compared humans to the Greeks? Modernist poets compared humans to the Greeks. Which of the following modernist poets compared human desire, poetic expression, female nature with jellyfish? Jellyfish ke saath kisne compare kiya hai? Who's compared it with the jellyfish? Who's compared it with the jellyfish? It's Marianne Moore. Okay. Who's uh, let, let's just do quick 20 questions right now today. So Marianne Moore, right? Jellyfish con compare kar raha hai? Jellyfish is Marianne Moore. Marianne Moore is the one who's actually comparing it over here. Even our D.H. Lawrence take the D.H. Lawrence is also using animal imagery. Don't forget animal studies. Aapke new studies may se bhi questions aate hai. Humanism, post-humanism, animal studies. Yeh sabhi aapke liye kaafi important ho jate hai. So you'll have to keep that in mind. Okay, moving on to the next question that you are having. Let's just see. In William Wordsworth's autobiographical poem, The Prelude, what were the three key ingredients uh, for creativity that he possessed? What were the three key ingredients for creativity? Three key ingredients kya unki creativity ke liye? A vital soul is extremely important. A vital soul is very important. You are able to see all the options are having one. A vital soul for uh, you know, words were that means you need to have a kind heart, you need to be good, uh, good natured person. Bola rata hai, that's what you have to be. You have to be a kind, a kind, good natured person altogether. Uh, what is the correct answer over here? Okay, that's a good try. That's a good try. That's a good try. Uh, elementary knowledge of things is also important. Basic knowledge in here, so you can't be a poet at all. So, this is what you can totally eliminate. Ho These two will be eliminated entirely. Skill to communicate with nature. Now, when you're talking about skill to communicate with nature, that is not required, right? It's not that array, if I'm not able to communicate with nature, I won't be able to actually publish work. Skill to observe natural phenomena, that is important. Okay? Communicate karpao, nahi karpao, that's a separate issue altogether. So one, two, and four. And please remember it is just not nature which is providing you with solace, it is the memory or recollection of nature. It is I it's just not the nature that we're talking about. It's recollection of nature that causes solace. Recollection of nature, jo hai, that is something which is causing solace to your mind altogether. So please remember that as well. Okay, moving on to the next question that is coming your way. Let's just see how many of you are able to answer this question. Which of the following romantic poets wrote a poem championing the principle of non-violent resistance and thereby inspired freedom fighter Mahatma Gandhi? Mondas Ganjan Gandhi. What is the right answer over here? Uh, this is called the Mask of Anarchy. This writer is writing this Mask of Anarchy. Likh rahe hai. Okay, Mask of Anarchy. So which work are we talking about? Who's the writer who's writing Mask of Anarchy? Henry David Thoreau, Leo Tolstoy, Sabko Pata Hoga. This is the answer. Hai. 
Yes, PV Shelley, absolutely right. PV Shelley is the right answer. So please remember Mask of Anarchy, which is there, right? He is actually starting with the Battle of Peterloo that had taken place. And this particular work is actually trying to talk about, uh, you know, a, a non-violent way of resistance altogether. So ye aapka resistance pehli baar aa jata hai, that Shelley actually elaborates. Even Henry David Thoreau has talked about it in Civil Disobedience Movement, the Civil Disobedience essay that he written, the same writer was writing Walden that you're able to see. Okay, moving on to the next question, moving on to the next question, what is the right answer over here? Which of the following romantic poets dwell on the aesthetic and mimetic features of art while commenting on the relationship between art and humanity? While com commenting on the relationship between art and humanity, what is the right answer over here? While commenting on the nature of art and humanity, while commenting on the nature of art and humanity. So which of the following romantic poets dwells on the aesthetic and mimetic? Konsa, whom are we talking about? Yes, Keats is the right answer. Rabi, aesthetic a jata hai. Tennyson was also inspired by this aspect of Keats and particularly Grecian on ke andar. He is talking about art, beauty and truth. He is discussing about art, beauty and truth. He talks about that extensively. That is what you are able to see, okay? Okay, moving on to the next question. If it's not clear, I'm saying that in which poem may Lord Byron was inspired by the Ottoman Empire. Take care. He was inspired by the Ottoman massacre of the Venetian garrison holding holding the a crockerith a crockerith in 1715 okay so kaun se work mein you were able to see that lord byron which work ke andar you are able to see that lord byron jo hai he was inspired he was inspired by the ottoman massacre he was inspired by the ottoman massacre he was inspired by the ottoman massacre of the venetian garrison holding a crockerith kaun sa work is the right answer it's called the siege very good monica excellent it's called the siege of corinth it is called the siege of corinth the siege of corinth is absolutely the right answer okay it is of course there it's getting published by john murray ottoman massacre se inspired tha okay this was inspired by the ottoman massacre okay what is the right answer which of the following by robert saudi deals with the hindu theology it is dealing with the hindu theology 18 uh 10 may ye work a raha hai 18 10 may ye work a raha hai aapka which work are we talking about and it's divided into 12 books right it is divided into 12 books all together which work are we discussing over here which work are we very good sonali curse of kahima is the right answer curse of kahima is absolutely the right answer this is the epic work that we are talking about ye kitne books mein divided hai 12 books mein divided hai ye all together and it's trying to tell you kahima jo evil priest hai right is able to gain significant amount of demonic powers Deathya Shakti usko mil jati hai all together and he wants to become a god um, and then he is of course uh, interrupted by his son Arvalan uh, right and uh, that that's how the entire story actually continues uh, overall right so Curse of Kahima Robert Saudi Hindi uh, Hindu mythology ko use kar rai. so please be very careful about it okay what is the correct answer here the following lines belong to which of the following works of William Blake William Blake mind forge manacles London se rai, chimney sweepers ke do parts hai, right what the hammer what the chain and what furnace was thy brain what the anvil what dread uh, dread grasp dare its deadly terror terrors class what is the correct answer over here what is the correct answer over here? Tiger is the correct answer. Okay, what is the correct answer? Tiger is the correct answer that you have. Fine, tiger is the correct answer that you are having. So please keep that in mind. Blake is using the structure. Uh, you know, so lamb uh, is is uh, is showing coyness. Tiger is representing the the rightful anger because that is also equally important for them. Okay, the rightful anger is also equally important. Okay. Uh, all right, 16th question. Very quickly, please answer it. In Elizabeth Barrett Browning's epic poem, Aurora Lay, who is the second heroine defined by her victimized circumstances? Who is the second? Elizabeth Barrett Browning, ke Aurora Lay, ke andar, who's the second heroine who is defined by victimized circumstances? Victimized circumstances, Aurora Lay, Aurora Lay. Which work are we talking about? Aurora Lay. 
which work are we discussing or early over here or early again Elizabeth Barrett Browning's important work altogether we will be talking about everything in greater detail we'll cover it end to end altogether Marian Errol is the right answer Marian Errol is absolutely the correct answer over here okay Marian Errol so again written in blank verse nine books may hai, written from the point of view or horror right it's it's other heroine Marian Errol abuse self-taught child of this itinerant parents who are moving from one place to another set in Florence, Melbourne, London, Paris okay? so you know victim of the society you are able to see or early can there she is the proper victim that you are able to look at okay moving on to the next question moving on to the next question very quickly which of the following Victorian poets wrote the dramatic monologue on Homeric hero Odysseus who wishes to sail beyond the baths of all the western stars beyond the baths of all the western stars is the likha hai? Who's written it? Who's written it? It's very simple, right? Lord Alfred Tennyson. Lord Alfred Tennyson. Ye is tarah ki questions galat nahi honi chahiye. Is tarah ki questions they are just literally there for you to actually increase your score altogether, and you shouldn't go wrong. Which of the following poems by Robert Browning presents his philosophical vision and compares God to a Potter? Compares God to a Potter is comparing God to a Potter. What is the correct answer? What is the correct answer? What is the correct answer over here? What is the correct answer over here? Rabi Ben Ezra. Okay. Rabi Ben Ezra is the right answer over here. Rabi Ben Ezra hai by Robert Browning. Right. Abraham Ibn Ezra. Uh, one of the greatest mathematicians, poets and scholars altogether. And uh, your optimistic vision be ek taras te represent kar rahe hai over here. Okay. So please keep that in mind. Okay, moving on to the next question that you're having, which of the following Victorian poets laments the loss of Christian faith uh, prevalent of, of his times, prevalent of his times? What is the correct answer here? What is the correct answer over here? Which of the following Victorian poets laments the loss of Christian faith prevalent of his times? What is the correct answer that you're able to see? What is the correct answer that you're able to see? Very good, very good, right. Uh, Matthew Arnold is the correct answer. Matthew Arnold's Dover's Breach May Loss of Faith. So the entire theme of loss of faith, kaha se start ho rahi hai? The entire theme of loss of faith, aapke Matthew Arnold se start ho rahi hai. So you'll have to remember that altogether. Okay, moving on to the last question that we are having for today. Uh, jaldi se bataye, what is the right answer over here that you are all able to see? Quickly tell us what is the correct answer that you are all able to look at. Uh, or maybe if you want, uh, but I, I would ideally want all of you to sleep on time. I don't want all of you to wake up late. In which of the following Victorian poems of the act of giving away one's precious hair in exchange of indulging in sensual pleasures takes place? In exchange of engaging in sensual pleasures takes place. This is goblin market, okay? This is goblin market. This is goblin market that we're talking about, right? This is goblin market that we're discussing. See, a couple of things I can, of course, stretch, but I really want all of you to sleep on time. I want all of you to wake up on time. Uh, please be absolutely focused. Jab bhi aap answers likh rahe honge, unko focus tarikke se baar dekhe ga, padhe ga. Achhi tarah se try and answering them, okay? Uh, try and answering most of these questions in a proper methodological manner. You'll have to retrieve the data from your brain altogether. So answer karega. There is no need for all of you to be very good Aziz. That's good news, right? There's no need for you to be confused. There's no need for you to be um, you know in a disturbed state of mind altogether. Just be very focused. I keep on saying use elimination method, use your presence of mind, use time for sorry, hundred questions. I take it in writing paper set up each of because you know they take multiple people uh, giving questions and then setting up the paper. Even the paper setter will not know all the hundred questions. If had it just been their own knowledge, right? So uh, you will have to keep it in mind that you know, Aram se ab dekh rahe ho, Aram se ab samaj rahe ho kaha kaha pe galtiya ho rahe hain. I have already, you know, even classroom class me I've shared uh, the analysis number. Please let me know. Uh, would love to keep in touch. Would love to know how the paper goes all together. Of course, for the June attempt, we are having like significant uh, other sessions that we'll be organizing both on YouTube as well as otherwise. Okay. But having said that, I really want all of you uh, to make sure that you know you let us know uh, how the paper goes fine thank you so much uh, uh himanshi is it all fine what did you write himanshi uh okay nice nice that's okay 
ठीक है दैट्स ऑल वाइट दे विल आल्सो बी डूइंग इट दे विल आल्सो बी डूइंग इट सो यू डोंट रियली हैव टू वरी अबाउट इट सो आई आई विल कैच अप विद ऑल ऑफ यू टुमारो कल हम लोग एनालिसिस पे लेके आएंगे आई होप टू सी सम ऑफ यू इन द सेंटर्स आल्सो वुड लव टू सी यू नो हाउ दैट गोस ऑलराइट चलो टेक केयर डोंट वेस्ट योर टाइम स्लीप ऑन टाइम एंड आई विल कैच अप विद ऑल ऑफ यू टुमारो इन केस ऑफ एनी अदर ट्रबल्स प्रॉब्लम्स डू लेट अस नो ऑलराइट थैंक्स एवरीवन फॉर जॉइनिंग एंड आई विशिंग यू ग्रेट लक एंड एंड आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू राइट योर पेपर्स वेरी वेल थैंक यू सो मच गॉड दैट Let's take care.